Joining me now, Pierre Polyever, the Minister of State for Democratic Reform. Good to have you back on the program. Good to be with you. Second reading is tonight at 6.30. We'll take it live. The opposition and many other people want to know, why did your government foreshorten shorten the debate on such an important bill as this one? Actually, there have been dozens of speeches and questions in the House of Commons already. Uh, the debate has been uh, very thorough, and it's just getting started. The second reading vote, of course, is the only the beginning of the process. It'll now go on to committee where we'll hear from many witnesses who will suggest changes and improvements, and uh, then those will be considered by all parties uh, around the committee table but before it comes back to the House of Commons for yet more debate and a third reading vote. Right. Uh, okay. But you are still shortening the debate in the House. Obviously, the opposition wanted more debate. And before tabling this, uh, there have been some, some legitimate expressions of complaint, including from the chief electoral officer who told me over the weekend that he didn't even get to see a draft of this um, until after the media saw it. I know you had one meeting in, with him in August. That's, that's not what usually, you know, in the past, the, the chief electoral officer would be involved in seeing a draft. Uh, how do you tell Canadians there's been enough consultation on such an important issue uh, when even the debate in Parliament's being shortened? Well, you, you touched on a lot of different points there. I'll try to respond to them one by one. First yeah. of all, I did meet with the CEO of Elections Canada. I listened to him carefully until he was done sharing his thoughts, uh, I, he, he, when he, until he ran out of things to say. In fact, I told him to call me if he thought of anything else. Since then, I read his reports, his testimony before a committee, and adopted 38 of his recommendations within the Fair Elections Act. He'll obviously testify once again before the House and then before the Senate. So his views will have been thoroughly taken into consideration. But with all due respect, he has a different, you know, I mean, I know you've said that to me before. His view is, why didn't he get to see a draft view of this? Why didn't you go back to him and say, here's the draft? Actually, it's typical that parliamentarians are the first to see legislation. Uh, that's the way we did it in this bill as well. Right, and, and he saw it after the media. Is that typical? Actually, it was available to him at the same time as it was available to the media. Here's what he said about some of the proposed changes. I spoke to him on CBC Radio's The House. One of his issues is that it limits his and restricts his ability to communicate with the public on specific issues. Here's what he said. Basically, my reading of the act is that uh, I can no longer about, uh, speak about democracy in this country except two points, where and when to vote. I would say that I'm not aware of any electoral bodies around the world who cannot talk about democracy. What's your response? He feels he's being muzzled quite clear. Well, I think he's misreading the Fair Elections Act. Uh, the, he's referring to our amendments of Section 18 uh, of the Canada Elections Act. That section deals with the ability of the CEO to purchase advertising and outreach in order to increase voter turnout. We're transforming that section so that it focuses Elections Canada's promotional campaigns on the basics of voting. Where, when, and what ID to bring. We're doing that because all of the evidence that Elections Canada has provided through its own reports demonstrates that the leading causes of non-voting in Canada are practical everyday issues and that uh, that there are large numbers of voters especially young voters who are not aware of some of the basic tools that are available to help them vote so if elections canada would focus more on that basic information then we could uh, increase voter turnout well, he, he, he interprets it differently he, here's what he told me surveys and research would be forbidden under the new bill i'm quoting him most of the research will no longer be published because there are communications to the public the reports will no longer be available in fact not only not available it won't be done at all well uh, section 533 534 and 535 of the existing canada elections act not only allow but require the CEO to communicate publicly through Parliament, uh, and none of those sections are changed in any way, shape, or form. No, but hold on, I've read those sections. I've, to be fair, I've read those sections. Yeah. They, he can communicate to public, but or to the Parliament, but Parliament, in order to, in and order, they're all public. Yeah, yeah, That's all on. public. Yes, it's true. But in order to communicate about the surveys to Parliament, he's got to first communicate to the public, and he sees these rules as restricting him the ability to do that. They won't do that. There will be no restriction on his ability to speak to the public, uh, to Parliament, or anywhere else. Um, uh, well, he, okay, the, he the, says he sees it otherwise. He, well, what about the student vote program? He told me he runs a student vote program that allows a half a million students who are not yet of voting age to vote in parallel elections. He says that program will be cut. Will it? The focus of his communications, his advertising and promotional campaigns will 
shift to the basics of voting. Uh, and that includes where, when, and what to bring. Why does that matter? According to his own surveys, Elections Canada, uh, by Elections Canada, the uh, half of young people are not even aware that they can vote in advance ballot uh, at the Elections Canada office or by mail. So if they're busy on Elections Day, one out of two young people in this country are not aware of the other opportunities to vote. A quarter of youth said that, who didn't vote, said that one of the reasons they didn't is because they didn't know where, when, or how to cast a ballot. But so even, the Man shifting... even the Manning Center said no. today that they need more education on elections, and he's saying, Mr. Merant told me, he'd like to continue educating young people, but he won't be able to do so. What was the, what's the rationale for cutting he, he, that? He will be able to inform young people of the basics of voting, and that's exactly what they need from their elections agency. We also have something called schools, universities, we have political parties which have outreach functions as well. So there are, it's, it's not as though um, the Elections Canada has an informational monopoly the, on how to educate people on the democratic There's no process. monopoly, but why should it have a restriction? It has, what, I, what we're bringing through the Fair Elections Act is focus. Focus on the basics of voting, because it is on those basics that the agency has not properly informed Canadians, and, and that is one of the reasons why we've seen a, a reduction in voter turnout. You blame them for a reduction? Of, you, you blame the failure of Elections Canada for the reduction of voter turnout? I blame the absence of good information for Canadian voters on the basics of voting, uh, in part for the reduction in voter turnout. Now, that is not based on an assumption. That's based on publicly available Elections Canada data, which shows, as I said earlier, that half of young people are not even aware of advanced voting opportunities, but that a quarter of them say that not knowing where, when, or how to vote influenced their decision not to cast the ballot, uh, and that three quarters of Aboriginal youth are not avail are, were not aware that they could vote uh, in advance. These are basic pieces of information but that how, the agency has a responsibility to quoting, communicate okay, to everyday people. I, I get that. You're quoting information based on reports that he's done. And he's telling me that the surveys and research that you're now basing your bill on no, won't be allowed wrong. to be done anymore. That's isn't wrong. that a bit ironic? No, it's not. It would be ironic if it were true, but it's not, so it isn't. Oh, so you're saying he's not telling the truth? I'm saying that the, uh, the, the changes we're making to Section 18 do not have that effect. What you said that, quote, the chief electoral officer shouldn't be wearing a team jersey, be both the referee and wearing a team jersey. Many people interpret that as a slander, a slur on him as if he was biased. I asked him about that and uh, he was very clear saying he's never worn a team jersey. What evidence do you have that he's been, quote, wearing a team jersey or in other words, functioning with a bias? Actually, if I could, I'll start by correcting the factual error in your question, Evan. Please do. Uh, the uh, statement that I made uh, referred to future commissioners of Canada elections, not the CEO. And uh, if you could re read the text, uh, I made the comments literally standing right here. Uh, the comment was made regarding a measure in the Fair Elections Act which requires that future commissioners of Canada elections cannot have worked for a political party or for Elections Canada and that the, the rationale behind that measure was that the, uh, the uh, referee should not wear a team jersey. So that was the, that was the comment. The comment was right, uh, is absolutely correct, and so, I stand by it. Okay, so uh, he said this, the only jersey that I'm wearing, uh, I believe, is the one with stripes, white and black. He interpreted it clearly, as did, frankly, most people, that the change you were making... Uh, by taking the commissioner out of his office and in the director of, of public prosecution to mean that the, the purpose of the change was that you thought Mayron was wearing both a team jersey and a, and a referee. Now you're saying that did not refer to him at all. So what's the rationale for the change? Well, no, it's not, let me correct you again. Okay. I, it's not that I'm now saying that. It's what, that's what I said in the very first place. I know, but, but, but so you're but saying I, he misinterpreted you. This, this is clear. Because no. he's clearly interpreted as a slight against him. That's why he commented. Anyway, the, I explained to you the factual error that you you laid out in yeah, but the you question. You keep saying I'm it. making a factual error. I, it's not me. <laughs> you I, are, Evan. Mr. You're Mayron, the one asking Mr. the question. No, I know, but Mr. Mayron responded as if it was about him. So is he okay. making an error? No, you're the one who made the error. And so I, as okay. to the issue of the, of the change, the change is to make the Commissioner of Canada Elections independent. That's the right decision. Uh, the Fair Elections Act will give the uh, Commissioner our watchdog 
sharper teeth, a longer reach, and a freer hand. A freer hand means that he will control his own staff, his own investigations, and, he won't, uh, and no one will be able to fire him. He doesn't have that independence now. He will gain it under the Fair Elections Act. All right, but but is this is, is this a solution in search of a problem? Had he ever been fired before? Some people say the problem is instead of reporting now to the chief electoral officer, the commissioner of Canada Elections in charge of investigations reports to the department of the director of public prosecutions, who reports to the minister of justice, reports to the government, whom he might actually be investigating. Well, let me, let me correct that point as well. The Director of Public Prosecutions is appointed by a, on the recommendation of an independent panel that is chosen by all political parties and the Law Society. Uh, his, his appointment is then approved by an all-party parliamentary committee, and the D DPP can only be removed by a vote of the House of Commons. So he is, has the same uh, independence protections as the CEO of Elections Canada has. Furthermore, the, the Director of Public Prosecutions Act in Section 2 explicitly bans the Attorney General from any involvement in matters related to the Canada Elections Act. So there is a double layer of independence here. So what, again, so, for, so remind then people what was the, per, why it was functioning so badly that you had to move the commissioner. Had there ever been a problem before? The purpose of the change under the uh, uh, Fair Elections Act is to give uh, the uh, commissioner uh, free hand, com complete and total independence from Elections Canada and from the elected government. And uh, that independence uh, is part of good governance, and I think it will work very well. I should also point out one thing. Under the status quo, any prosecution related to the Candidate Elections Act already has to go through the Director of Public Prosecutions. So anybody who says the DPP is not independent cannot possibly support the current Canada mm. Elections Act because it already requires the DPP sign off for charges to go ahead. Mr. Mehran, last point. He, he obviously he said right now. I'm, I'm reading a quote from him. Uh, right now, we get an overall reporting stating expenditures of parties during campaigns. We don't have the supporting documents that can attest to those expenditures, so it makes it very difficult to carry out a complete compliance review of those returns. He told me straight up the changes you're making with this bill will make it harder for Elections Canada to follow the money. So in a robocall type scandal, it will be simply much trickier, much more difficult than that or the in and out issue that he's tracked. That it'll be harder for Canadians to follow the money. What's your response to that? That's impossible, because not only will the parties continue, will, will, will they be forced to continue making the same reports that they already make, there'll be a further com external compliance audit imposed on parties that isn't required right now, and all expenses related to robocalls will have to be explicitly carved out and reported separately from the rest of the financial report, something that does not exist right now. The, he told me, quote, I am not aware of any electoral body around the world who cannot talk about democracy. That's how he characterized this. What's your, what would you say to him when he says that kind of thing? I, I agree. And, but he says now he's prevented from talking about democracy, sir. I mean, this is the point. He said... No. No? Okay, so you're saying May Ronald basically got his entire interpretation look, of this bill is wrong. Look, the Section 18, you're going back to Section 18 again. Section 18 deals with the advertising function of Elections Canada. It has nothing to do with the, the ability of a person to just speak in general terms with the media or parliament. It has to do with the advertising and promotional campaigns that Elections Canada runs. We're going to focus those on the basics of voting. Look, uh, he can bring forward uh, his concerns to the committee, and if the, the language of the, um, the amendment uh, needs to be clarified for him to give him comfort, then there's no problem with that. But right. the fundamental will stay the same, and that is that mm -hmm. the pro promotional campaigns of Elections Canada will focus ex exclusively on where, when, and what ID to bring, and what are the special tools available to help disabled voters cast their ballots. And finally, just on that note, um, again, he's, he's been on the record saying that, the, remo that the, uh, the vouching element to the bill, people requiring um, ID and no longer the, the old system, will disenfranchise up to 100,000 voters. Well, you know, the Newfeld report, which he commissioned, said that there were irregularities in 25% of cases where vouching was used. And uh, the report also said that these were serious errors, not small uh, administrative ones, if I can quote directly, too frequently the errors, errors are so serious that the courts would judge them to be irregularities that violate 
the legal provisions that establish an elector's entitlement to vote. I could go on, but there are many quotes right out of the report that Elections Canada Commission would show this method of voting to be subject to high levels of irregularities that threaten the integrity of the system. Would he still be able to write a report like that under the new bill? Yes. He will, and still be able to talk about it in public? Of course. Uh, not at a parliamentary hearing, just in an interview? Yes. Okay. Uh, Pierre Polievo, we look forward to that uh, second reading vote tonight. Thank you very much.